what writers did you enjoy reading when you were when you were little when you were a child oh when I was little yeah I really so depending on like what age mm -hmm. um I really I really liked C.S. Lewis yeah a lot um and the, like this kind of the fantastical elements mm -hmm. of his books um and also there's this collection or the series called Among the Hidden that I really, really liked that, that I've read in like, I think probably middle school. Um, but I can't actually remember the author's name, um, but I remember being quite obsessed with that, mm -hmm. that collection. And then um, another, probably around middle school, um, another author that I loved reading and that wrote several series is Tamara Pierce. And I would say, I don't know if you've heard of her. Yeah. 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 Okay. I loved her books. I remember sitting in the library like every day at, at school, just reading anything and everything she ever written. Um, and of course, starting with like the Alana series. So yeah, she was definitely, um, definitely a huge inspiration and probably one of the reasons I was really into, to writing and got really into writing. And did you write when you were a child then? Yeah, I, um, I, when I was actually really little, mm -hmm. um, probably, I'm trying to, I think, I think 10, I wrote my sister a comic novel book sort of thing yeah. Yeah, about like superheroes. Um, yeah, so I was really, I was always really into kind of like writing mm -hmm. books. Like it always seemed like, a, it was always like, I loved reading um, as a kid. And then I think, um, when I was about, you know, 13, I got really into like fan fiction and I was writing a lot of fan fiction. <laughs> I had a, been there. <laughs> we've all been there. I think I'm pretty yeah. sure we have. Um, and so I was like really, and I was writing like n novels of fan fiction. Like mm -hmm. I was completing, that's probably the, you know, the most long form I've ever written is probably fan fiction. Um, so that was kind of like early preteens, early teens. And then, um, I got really into, you know, literary fiction. And um, I, so I started with prose, as you can probably tell, yeah. like, like fiction. Yeah. Um, uh, and um, yeah, I, when I was like 15 plus, 15, 16, yeah. 17, I was really into just writing prose and um, very lyrical prose, very imagistic prose. I knew that about myself, but I, I was like into world building and, building characters um, and telling stories through that form. And then, yeah, when I was about 18, 19, I got really into poetry. Do you, when you write, do you show your work in progress to someone before it's finished or do you keep it to yourself usually? I guess because, um, so I encountered poetry. I first started really falling in love with poetry um, on forums, mm -hmm. like online forums, uh, not on school or anything. Um, and the kinds of places that I was writing, when I started to take writing more seriously, um, mm -hmm. I was putting my work up on forums and people were critiquing it um, based on craft. Like it was quite, I think it was quite advanced for being like a, you know, like a teen online forum. And so I kind of, when I first encountered, and also even, I don't know what your experience is, but even with like fan fiction, you're putting your work out there and yeah. you're getting great. Yeah. yeah. And like works on works in progress and mm -hmm. like learning about who you are and your style and who you are as a writer. So I think because that's the way I was introduced to writing and then I went a very academic route. So I, mm -hmm. I um, took workshops in university and then I did an MFA, which is very um, workshop based. Mm -hmm. I was always just very primed and sharing. Just, yeah. Uh, yeah, sharing. Yeah, like it was part of my routine of writing. I just, um, I was, I, I guess I was quite okay with receiving critique and feedback negative or positive um and very eager to kind of grow as a writer and that felt like a very natural way to do it and also I think poetry because that's that's significantly significantly what I write or is my primary primary genre now I think for me it's so community based and it's so much about you know the people I met on the forum that introduced me to what poetry could be and then like my beloved first workshop group who like some of my best friends are like where I met some of my best friends who are still my best friends now and yeah. discovering together I think that I can't imagine writing in isolation even now a lot of the community-based programs I'm part of I do like 
I love writing together and sharing writing with each other, not always for methods of critique or methods of like drafting, but also yeah. for experiencing and sharing with each other. Do you think that helped you with your collaborative work then on your collection Second Memory? Yeah, I think there was, yeah, I think that's actually such a good way to think about it because for me, writing always felt like such a collaborative process mm -hmm. anyway, and a community-based process, the formal collaboration of Second Memory actually did feel quite natural. It felt very natural to show someone else my work in progress, but also respond to the way that they were reading my work by way of creating new, mm -hmm. new work with that same piece. So yeah, I would say absolutely. I think, you know, this kind of the way that I think and feel about writing poetry, lyric essay, mm -hmm. the way I the way I approach it is very much about, in a way of sharing um, and responding. Um, and even the work that I've been writing more recently or have been really excited about, mm -hmm. even though it's not collaborative in the way that Second Memory is collaborative with Petrusha, it's collaborative in the way that it's very intertextual. So I'm responding to other poems or I'm responding to quotes um, from the other people I've written in mm -hmm. um, or incorporating their words in my work with permission and things like that um so yeah i think that it's just a very naturally it's just very natural for me to think mm -hmm. about my writing that way what would you say then was the biggest challenge of this form Do of this club yeah um someone in this way i think you know things really fell into place really mm -hmm. easily with second memory um so I think the biggest challenge was getting started because um, we had been talking about collaborating on a piece. Patricia and I were, were friends, were really good friends. And um, she had asked me if I wanted to collaborate on something and write something together because our styles are kind of like, they're quite in sync, I would say. And um, our experiences really toggle well together, I think. And so we were for, for months and months, probably, you know, time constraints, capacity, also the fact that, you know, you're working along, you're working on this collaborative piece alongside, you know, the project that you're yeah. working on. Yeah, you would know. So like, I think getting started was probably the most difficult thing because once we put words on the document, so we, we used mm -hmm. a Google Doc actually to create this piece. Once we put words on there, things like the structure, things like the themes, um, the voice, all of it kind of clicked into place, but yeah. That's rolling, yeah. Yeah, it totally. totally worked. So it was it was worth it. <laughs> oh, good. I'm so glad. Um, I also loved, as I said, I've read some of your things from Hinge as well. And I loved um, My Body is a Forest and Elsewhere. Um, because Thank I'm also you. someone who moved from a different country. And I'm also very often talking with the idea of uh, what it means to belong to a different place, what it means to learn how to exist in a different place. And I was wondering, what does it mean for you to truly belong? somewhere mm -hmm. that's such a good question it's such a good question um and it's so hard to answer as well but it's also always changing I think like when I first started thinking about the ways that I fit in in Canada where I was born and started questioning the kind of interactions I was having that made me feel like I didn't belong there for whatever reason um I think there was a sense of okay, how can I make myself belong? I can assimilate. I can, you know, try to pick apart myself and discard parts mm -hmm. of myself that I thought or I perceived as not fitting in and not belonging. Um, which of course then led to actually heightening that feeling of not belonging rather than what I was hoping it would do, which is make me feel like everybody else. Mm -hmm. um, so I think um, eventually to sort of, offset the internalization I'd done um, at, up until that point, it was through, um, you know, having conversations with family mm -hmm. um, and learning more about my history, uh, trying to reclaim some of the language that I'd, that I'd lost, um, asking questions of like my father who loves to tell stories and um, finding people, finding communities, finding places that made me feel like a kind of sense of calmness or kind of sense of um, reclamation, I suppose. Mm -hmm. 
other so for in for example like you know in Canada often that was the landscape kind of made me feel that way um but also other writing other people's writing that like they made me feel that way um uh, so I'm just thinking of you know like one of my major inspirations is like Banu Kapil who mm -hmm. is like British but also American amazing poet. yeah mm -hmm. and so I just remember like reading her first like her first collection vertical interrogation of strangers and listening to or reading all of these stories of women that had come from so many different experiences South Asian women and feeling so connected to that so I think literature was definitely a way for me to feel like I belonged but as I've moved to several other places I lived in the U.S. for a bit I lived in Scotland for a bit I lived in London for a bit I think I came to realize that like I find belonging within people as much as I do within place so even having even the opportunity to have this conversation with you and the and like for you to have related to the experience that mm -hmm. I was outlining in my poetry that it makes me feel like I belong in this conversation um, it makes me feel like this conversation is a little bit of my homeland so I think it has a lot to do with like that relatability of people with each other and of safety that you can feel in certain places whereas in other conversations I don't always feel that you know yeah. I'm sure you experience that I know yeah it's very nicely but this is what um, I did feel when I was reading, when I first read your collection, second memory, your collaborative collection, and then I read some of your other things. And this is what I did find. I, I, I felt heard and I felt understood. Um, going back to the more technical um, aspects of poetry, do you think, how important is for you um, accessibility of meaning of a poem? Do you think that uh, the reader should work, work hard to understand a poem or should it be, should it be not something they solve, something they feel directly? Hmm. I think, you know, different poems can kind of do different things for different people. And um, I, I remember having a conversation with one of my mentors, like a teacher that I really respect. And I had brought Lee Young Lee to this teacher. And she really loves, loves and loved difficult poems. And Lee Young Lee is, I, I feel like it had a more of an emotional tenor, like you kind of feel it, the the language is beautiful and lyrical, um, but the meaning is quite often straightforward. And so I remember at that at that moment was kind of one of those moments where I was where where I was so plainly told about like someone's preference of a very mm -hmm. difficult poem because I think up until that point, um, craft has always been important. Like how I how I put together a line, how I construct an image, how I resonate rep like images with each other through repetition, like all of that is very deliberate. Um, but I'd never, I'd never wanted my poems to keep people out. Like I've always wanted them to draw people in. But when thinking about, um, thinking about, you know, difficulty, there's a lot of experimental and avant-garde poems that, you know, play quite intensely with language and the meaning is in within that playfulness. And, and for some people that can be a barrier, but I start to really also enjoy that kind of work as well. So I see, you know, how the poems are working and, mm -hmm. and their medium for what they are and appreciate that. Um, personally, I think, I don't know. I think lately my poems have started incorporating a little bit of theory, which can sometimes be a little difficult in mm -hmm. terms of it not being you know, you know, accessible to everyone or straight, you know, or straightforward. But I also, I also hope and I strive for my poems to evoke feeling um, through image. Like, I think I'm so drawn to imagery above everything. And I think if I can, if my poems are giving people a sensorial experience, that in itself is actually meaning um, and the one that I'm kind of striving for. And do you, I know this is a very difficult question, but do you have a favorite poem of yours? Something that you've written that you really, really love? I know it's very difficult to choose one. <laughs> <laughs> so I was going to say, you know, Second Memory, though it's like lyric essay hybrid poem, mm -hmm. is actually one of my favorite pieces of writing that I've done. And I think that's because it's collaborative, because I can because there's no way I can ever look at that book and not enjoy something in it, because I can always enjoy even like Patricia sections or even those sections that Patricia drew out in me. Mm -hmm. So I think that I enjoy it for that reason um, and enjoyed the writing process of it a lot. But if I was to choose kind of like one single author poem of mine, um, 
To be honest, I think it might be the poem, the title poem of Hinge. It might be Hinge um, because I think that it incorporates so many things that I think, yeah, I think if I, if I was to list up all the themes that I kind of obsess over, I think Hinge incorporates them all like, you know, sexuality and prayer and faith and science and landscape and water and seeing oneself and understanding oneself. So I think like, and womanhood and yeah, yeah I think all of it, I think it just kind of captures um, everything in a way that has a movement that I really enjoyed writing. Um, if you could go back now and tell your younger writing self one mm -hmm. advice, what would it be? Just one piece of advice. Um, I think it would be to not to 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 be, of course, open to sh always sharing mm -hmm. pieces with other people, whether they're works in progress or not. But I think what's really important is to is to not take everyone like in a workshop for example take everyone's mm -hmm. critique as truth um because i think one of the most important things i learned as a writer is um when to kind of trust myself and i spent a lot of time in my mfa learning amazing with amazing people but when i was doing revision i was trying to take in every single comment particularly that like my teachers were telling me mm -hmm. to, to to take in and i kind of lost myself i like lost my voice i lost the sort of um intuitive way that i wrote um and things that i loved intuitively and i wonder if that's something that every writer kind of goes through as you're as you're as you're learning who you are as a writer to begin with. So yeah, I think that's my advice. And lastly, um, can you give advice to someone wanting to write and publish poetry? Yeah, um, there's, the, there's the advice to read a lot, which I think is often told to people as advice, but is really important because it's, I think I would not have written, written nearly as much if I wasn't reading as much as I was mm -hmm. reading. Um, I guess another piece of advice I would give is maybe don't worry so much about publishing the work mm -hmm. while writing the work. I, I completely, I, I believe in like pe people aiming to share their work with audiences. Like that's not to say, cause as I know, it's an important part of the poetry, but I think just kind of like we were talking about with critique, I think if you go into it, like ch chasing trends or thinking about publication um, at the at the beginning, it'll change your writing mm -hmm. um, quite a in, in a quite a specific way because um, you'll be writing toward something like mm -hmm. a specific case or specific audience. Um, yeah, but I think reading reading a lot, um, being intentional with trying to write a, like a little bit, maybe not every day, because that's not feasible for, for everyone, but um, taking advantage of the, the little, the times that you do have to write yeah. um, and not expecting a perfect draft the first time, just using the time, like getting anything down. This is I actually have to take that advice for myself. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for this.